is a common way she seems to work in large communities. Here's where she gives the example from a 1950 study of the government system in California to protect and gain the groundwater nation from all the use of the human contamination of the ocean. Instead of allowing there to be a race to overcome scarce water supply, government multi-level collaborated to establish government systems that remain largely and public sector without the government being a central regulator. No one ever owns nations themselves. They can manage by policy centric set of limited purpose governmental enterprises whose government includes active participation. That's important too, active participation by and this is a private water company, voluntary producers association, so there's balance there. And uh, neither the system is neither centrally owned nor centrally regulated. And it's one of the reasons we think that revenue neutral carbon free and dividend being a market-based approach to uh, CO2 reduction would be helpful. Now this is kind of a repeat. Uh, you might read it to yourself and I'll give me a moment to quit talking. But these are the actual eight points that are recognized around the world for people who are working on the commons. I'm not going to read it, just read it yourself. Now, this is this last section before um, conclusion. Eight examples of some long standing traditional commons and then some modern commons. And some of these people are probably quite familiar with. I know Shelly and Mike Lamb live in Mexico, and those of you who live in Mexico are really familiar with the Neo Sepia system. And they will continue to manage scarce water supplies in the desert area. The Peruvian potato park. Uh, enable indigenous to be sure to work in a variety. System of catch shares in Namibia as a common space strategy for, for, for preventing over harvesting of fish, where that would be a good deal for all the organizations. The seed sharing communities of Dalit women in India who have resurrected traditional farming methods as a way to achieve food security for themselves. And then three modern examples. The solar commons of Phoenix, a project in progress that will generate electricity for commons trust using solar panels and big right away. A sky trust, also known as Captain Dividend System, which is another interesting concept along with revenue neutral carbon free and dividend, is a proposed stakeholder trust for urban carbon emissions in the atmosphere while ensuring social equity. Steve Barnard, she's done that work in that area. And then you're going to make mediated with commons that manage certain types of ecological resources, as in participatory sensing of water, air, and other natural resources using electronic trenches, echo crowdsourcing that enables individuals to contribute to help aggregate data about geographically dispersed phenomena such as birds and other flies, which is certainly in the headlines. This sampling of commons is not comprehensive, but it shows a feasible range. There's no universal template. The character of commons is determined by the nature of the specific resource being managed, communities of sensitivity and culture, special practices and values adopted by that community. Successful commons move together many factors into a functional whole. Precisely because common works in a particular holistic way, it can lift certain human energies and adapt to needs of ecosystems, both large, big planetary, <coughs> and small. The most of these are small. Commons can frequently organize people in habitats that neither concentrated markets nor centralized state action can feasibly manage. 
The allure arises from the manipulation of shared resources, everything is used, nothing is wasted, reciprocity, change itself, willingness to argue, long memory, collective celebration, and mutual aid of traits and commerce. So you see there's quite a bit of repetition here, compounding all the ideas uh, that make up a commerce. So here's a, each of these is a one page PowerPoint for each of the examples I'm going to bring down. New Mexico, I said, is northern New Mexico, Upper Rio Grande, that's what you want to do too, is a traditional home of the Pueblo Indians, desert farmers for millennia, as well as a home for five centuries now to some of the families who use acequias, urban dishes to move the water to crops. By the way, acequia is a derivative of an Arabic word. A lot of Spanish words are starting with A-C-A-L, or actually Arabic words, and Arabs were in the uh, Iberian Peninsula uh, in the 700s onwards and brought many good things at that time. Based on the local subsistence mode, the water control relies on simple structures. Small scale hermit work can improve only minimally with natural flow streams. Authority over water distribution and management remains completely within the local community with the users. A second institution has functioned as the only form of local government more of a county level for a long time. Uh, like we have neighborhood watches in New Mexico in the springtime there is a ditch boss which tells everybody on that uh, safety of mine, they the mother ditch, the main ditch, and if you have offshoots on it, get out there and clean your ditch because the next person down the line can't get their water unless you keep your section of the ditch clean. As biological systems, the safety of other important things that explore in water conservation, properly recharge, wildlife and plant habitat preservation, and energy conservation. And it runs counter to critics that the earth is at the irrigation now, the wasteful use of the soils and efficient and waste. Now we're going to see some of the problems with maintaining the executive systems in the desert southwest, and particularly in New Mexico. Since the 1960s, water markets and the demographic forces behind them, population growth, immigration, land development, place fragile, effective communities at risk. Water laws in Mexico and most western states would be a doctrine of private appropriation, first come, first serve, and severability. Okay, now you don't have it. Now you see it, now you don't. Water can be transferred to alternative beneficial uses. Water rights can be bought and sold in the marketplace. Industries often locate in the larger cities of the upper Rio Grande bioregion because of the cultural, scenic, recreational, and other chain amenities that rural landscapes provide. So if the effectives are at risk, attraction to the area, and they mean marketable attraction as well, of course, can be at risk. All right, the rest go to the data part. It's a landscape conservation model focused on conservation and sustainable use of plant genetic resources to traditional Andean approaches to agrobiosity. Indigenous uh, cultural heritage area, Incha, is a uh, university of Andean native potato species, species in more than 90 varieties. The Incha model is a community led and white space approach to conservation, protecting and enhancing local livelihoods, uh, cultural diversity, and knowledge, traditions, and philosophies. We have the same ideas follow through in all of these trends of indigenous people, <coughs> relative to holistic and adaptive management of traditional agricultural landscapes. <coughs> the Andes Mountains are among the most biologically and cultural diverse world region. <coughs> they, are, they represent two recognized hot spots of biodiversity. <coughs> two, the origin of major cultivated species, two of the eight. 20 of 36 South American World Heritage Sites are in the Andes, and more than 205 native languages are spoken. <coughs> now, each of these is kind of, each of these pages, PowerPoint pages, will describe how these commons are at risk. Diversity is deteriorating rapidly in face of global trends. Current conservation approaches are failing to address socioeconomic, cultural, political, and institutional challenges. The potato park, though, is made up of 7,000 villagers, 
take indigenous communities, joint humanities, the communal land, collective benefit. They were cultivated by making poems over 7,000 years. Nine of the cross varieties of Roman Park, as well as other food crops, guinea pigs, llamas, traditional tools are used. And here are some of the cultural practices to see some of the richness that are in the politics of the American There are ritual offerings to Pachamama. Pagos is the Spanish word for payment. And this is based on the practice of reciprocity. Ancestral Kmita, or community labor, is a concept of exchange. <clears throat> we work together in a community for each other. That is exchange. And nurturing. I'm here again, they have a concept of mountain gods, but it is a fragile concept as of today. And the Jacob Park has no legal or national recognition. Locally recognized as a conservation area and ecotourism destination needs international protection for the cultural process as well as a livelihood. <coughs> Resource grant. This is a common based solution for overfishing and fisheries management, the case of Namibia. Research learns a key concept in fisheries management and source of considerable wealth to society. Research can be squandered if there is excess capacity leading to the depletion of fisheries resources. <coughs> Namibia, in the mid 1990, is a good example of a successful fisheries management leading to valuable resource rent. The Namibia, in the recent New government declared coherent fisheries policy and enacted comprehensive legislation. You see a few more reasons in there. The combination of the deficit policy of the coastline, there were only two harbors that limited places where fish could be landed, but it also increased control of the fishing. <coughs> there were catch limits relative to optimum biomass to not overfish, and because of that, some fishers, people who were fishing, were excluded. There is a total allowable catch divisible into individual quotas set annually for eight fish species. Quota fees charged on everyone who fish. And it was structured to encourage Namibian registration and ownership of fishing, fishing vessels. A fishery rights are not transferable. License is required for all vessels in Namibian waters and use them in fishing. Now, I know this is very detailed, but one of the reasons for it is so that we can begin to see what's important to make the commons work or not work. So that's the reason for the details I put in here. We must move away, the thought way that one must move away from the incentive to harvest fish before others do so, in other words, competitive, to just a fish and fishing effort to achieve optimal harvest in the long term. The government was serious about enforcement. The Spanish treat, uh, denied, uh, treat did not treat illegal fishing, and the government was able to uh, take tough enforcement action on the Spanish treat. <coughs> Factors contributing to the reduction in fishing effort, clearly defined enforcement rights, effective monitoring, control and surveillance. In other words, the understanding that high value product and long term planning rights require regulation with consent and it gives for better compliance at lower cost and enforcement. In rights-based management system, one must establish early on that the right to the benefit must be paid for since it does have low value. And then we have again to be a good example. I'm going to just start reading this. Let me tell you quickly what the dollar payment is in India. Dollar is the lower class, the lowest class, the untouchables. And they had lost their capability performance because in the 1960s and 70s, uh, the monocultural systems came in with the big corporate agricultural agribusinesses. And so many of the old time farmers, two things happened. One, they left the land because they couldn't keep up. And two, between the dates, 1997 and 2007, there were some 20,000 farmers that committed suicide yearly because they could not keep up. In other words, what they would do, they wouldn't be able to pay for, say, Monsanto's cotton seed, and they wouldn't be able to pay for glyphosate Roundup. And so what they would do is they'd launch their honor and well, back to lose their farm. They would go out to the farm fields and drink pesticide and die. And so finally, uh, later in the 2000s, uh, they, 
Indian government who liked to perceive itself as the economic tiger, like Brazil and India and now China, of course. Yeah, I can't remember what the other one is right now, but thank you was not paying attention to that aspect. So what the Dalit women did, because they were afraid to lose their land, and therefore they couldn't create food for themselves, is that they, and they had a help, they had help not from the experts, but from each other, in communities. They went to their mothers and their grandmothers and said, do you have seed? And so it's in rounds of cultivation, they're able to acquire sufficient seed so that now they have seed and food security and they can trade seeds, but they can't sell seeds. So it's been a kind of a wonderful event. And then there's another one I might refer to. Unfortunately, that's not what's happening. That's a kind of a trap. My family has a seed that is genetically modified. So we've actually had glyphosate in order to germinate. So in Mexico, glyphosate, the corn is open pollination. So it's being blown down in Mexico. So all these people who have their corn, these native spring, sort of like the cave part, I mean, there's hundreds of varieties of corn, and it's going to be open pollinated, and it's going to get the Monsanto genes in there, but they're going to have to pay Monsanto for that. They can't keep the seed, they're not allowed to keep the seed, and they're going to have to buy black that. And the tragedy here is that where did corn develop in the New World, but in Central America and Central Mexico? The THC tree that was the original maize developed there, and now we're ruining the genetics. It's, it's, like, it's not just like that's a bad thing. It's about that. That's right. And farmers have lost their lawsuits just recently. I read about lost their lawsuit against Montana because Montana was just this. You know, the farmers are so big. So he lost his lawsuit about, I think it was. Was it wheat? Anyway, his, his stuff was contaminated by Monsanto, but he had to pay the price. But there are all sorts of seeds going on with Monsanto. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're pushing them. They're hoping to push them into panic mode. But right. this would be another case where the U.S. and corporations cost classic so that to the economy, and then there will be a flood over I'm an interpreter, internationally certified, and I interpret on the phone for those very people. So I know their stories. And, and the drug lords that sometimes have compounded the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your All right. I think that's an important thing there with the knowledge. The solar commons, uh, you can look at this, but I'll try to say it kind of quickly. Uh, the city of Phoenix has decided it can be a trust and a working, uh, a trust, a land trust. They will give the land so that we can set up a solar commons <coughs> for electricity. <coughs> the electricity will be used by some of the low subsidized, uh, subsidized housing people. But it will become a pattern across the United States, a national pattern for how to work with other entities, not just the people that were kind of like us, but management and privatization people and all that. So in many, many senses, this solar uh, in and Phoenix is good. Starting and, exactly. in and this says all that in the details here. Um, I'm going to go to website for that. So you've been, been to it in Yeah, I've been to it in Oh, right. Yeah. Did you teach? Did you teach in Tucson? No, I, I was on the ASU and I didn't go to that school. Mm -hmm. The other school. But they still remember some more. People are trying to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Walmart really wants to do it. I mean, I they put it on the corner of the building. It's great in the federal government. Thank we're just about done there. And the Sky Trust, another stakeholder trust, Peter Barnes, 2001, cap and dividend, a social version, social equitable version of cap and trade. Uh, in his book, Who Owns the Sky, Our Common Assets in the Future of Capitalism, proposes a commons-based system for reducing carbon emissions into the atmosphere by, watch this, for prioritizing, but not privatizing the right to In other words, making it a thing, <coughs> property-wise, but not privatizing it. <coughs> and then in 2006, this other book he put out, <coughs> as a commons-based routine for assuring the equitable use of collective resources, such as 
you can read that. And then so these are not all actually real. Some of them are proposed, but some of them are real. So take a look at that list. Under the Commons Trust idea, value not based on the financial value of common assets, the marketplace for the preservation of common resources, and we live the system that manages the producing. Hence, long-term wealth arising, not through consumer demand, investment, or capital accumulation, but by the enhancement of the carrying capacity of global commons to support life and life systems. And we can't seem to get there. We can't seem to wrap our heads around it being for everybody, a sort of thing. <coughs> so the side trust mission is, but this is not going to put in place. This is proposed. And uh, it can also be based on uh, the idea of scarcity of rent, which is similar to our revenue to carbon free building. But Sheldon, you and I have talked about cap and dividend from an article I read several months ago. So Peter Barnes is one of the people who read for that. Good chance. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, 3.0. And this last, this last one. To the individual technology relative to the ecological commons. Uh, and it's just using all the incredible technology that we have, web based and so forth, to be able to, as an example, uh, let me do the last one. Participatory thinking, citizen scientists using electronic devices to help collect environmental data for ABC. All of them's bird count, World Water Monitoring Day, Project Bird, Bird, Birds. Now, <clears throat> the future of the commons and ecological governance. This is all a projection, it's a proposal. It is something that's been real for thousands of years. People have got together in small groups and made it work. But it's a threat to everyday practice that we take for granted that there is no alternative way. So it's hard to imagine that we can actually go toward the commons, but there are so many examples of things that are already being used this way. Let me see if I can find the, the particulars here. I'll ask the permanent fund, for example. Um, Cooperative land trusts, national parks, municipal utilities, land grant colleges, which is a big portion of royalty for the last the permanent time, you probably know that now. And let's see, another item that has been <coughs> globalized. In the 1950s, the cooperative regime to manage an Arctic that is not just the commons was adapted, and soon thereafter, involved in regime to place limits on national sovereignty in outer space. And I'll read these last two then But it is a struggle to achieve international agreement on limiting atmospheric carbon emissions and the pollution of oceans, critical water, water systems. This has shown that planetary commons are of a fundamentally different character than local or regional commons and we will require entirely new types of multilateral policy innovation. This challenge has less to do with the body of law than with an opening up of the governing process itself so that commoners can play a more meaningful role in the shaping of policy. Somewhat on the same line as what Bolivian and the work said, where nature has rights, somewhat like citizens united to give corporations personal rights. But if you know more about what's happening in Ecuador and Bolivia, they are still keeping the capitalist growing upwards, but they are still using all of their oil and gas uh, capabilities of extraction. So it's a wonderful thought and it has a long history because of it's a, a Pachamama idea. Let's see. I think this is my last. Uh, this paragraph is good, the third one down. Many commons models work well and are more efficient from a holistic perspective, have broad social fields that they invite participation enjoy greater role of dignity than governments. They find it makes very pretty much more than governments, provide more social and equitable outcomes. In the face of a troubled neoliberal economic policy order that depends upon ongoing subsidies from taxpayers and economies on top of rigid centralized hierarchies that include flexible evolution, feed, savage inequalities, 
and report our trials and secrets we can provide, the public has much to offer. Had the singular virtue of setting forth and compelling the other adult candidates to engage structural crises of neoliberal economics that might arrest the deterioration of the current education system and put them under sustainable intergenerational management. So the plea here is for, in the last paragraph, we keep chastening whether the viability of the season will resonate with a lot of groups of people who are willing to take on the urgent challenges at hand for the community of the social enacted by commoners themselves. So that concept of the grassroots, we've got to continue to pursue that as we are and have been for quite a long time. Anybody got it? Not so much a question, because I'm not the expert, and I might refer to uh, Gary as an expert, but anything I can say will be what we know. Well, I was working at the time, I had